Hi, it's Tiffany from Daisy Farm Crafts, and today I'm going to do a little tutorial for Hannah's latest blanket that she's made using these this ribbing stitch. It's kind of like elongated ribbing, and um, I'm working with Bernat Velvet. Today, the swatch that I worked up is made up in Bernat Baby Velvet, and I'm using a size H five millimeter hook. The blanket that Hannah made um, is out of the regular velvet and so she did choose a little bit bigger hook size but the key with velvet that we have found is to keep your tension pretty tight and if you have a hard time go down a hook size use as small of a hook as possible we really like using this ribbing stitch for the velvet too it seems to not pull on us as much and um this is a the stitch for the border is half double crochet wide half double crochet I should say we're working in between each post so let's get started with the pattern repeat which is any odd number times two plus four so I think for our sample swatch I will take the number nine multiply multiply it by two which is 18 and then add four so 22 chains is where I'm going to start so you just create a simple slip knot here and let's work 22 chains. All right, I have 22 chains here and they are so tricky to see. You kind of have to, you're gonna have to use your fingers to fill. This will probably be the hardest part is getting the exact number of chains and double crochets in your first row. So we're going to start in the fourth chain from the hook, counting right here, this first one, not the one around the hook. One, two, three, four. I'm just filling for the bumps to kind of help me find. And this very first row is all double crochet. So work one double crochet into each stitch across the row. All right, you should have worked 19 double crochet, plus we have these, this, um, those three chains we skipped over is the turning chain. So count each post if you have to, there should be 19 of them. Now at the end of this row, we will chain two and we'll always just chain two to turn. Now we start our pattern. And what you do is you're going to insert your hook and pop that first post forward. It's called a front post double crochet. And work a front post double crochet again. Now we'll work the next two as back posts. So you kind of need to turn your work back this way, get your hook in there and poke that post out to the back. Do another one. So we have two to the front and two to the back. Now repeat that all the way down the row, two forward and two backward and two on the back. I've worked down the row. This is what you, you know, you've got your ones popping forward, and the ones in the back. I'm almost to the end here. And I've got two more to pop forward and then we have this turning chain. And this turning chain, just go ahead, insert your hook in, underneath those chains and work a regular double crochet. Chain two and turn. And now we want these posts to stay on the same side of the work. So now 
we will, since the ones are facing towards the back, we'll start with a back post double crochet. So get your hook back there. And here's the front. All right, we will continue this for eight rows going in this direction. We want these posts to be elongated. So we will keep this same pattern and um, for eight rows. And when you get back to here, still um, work a double crochet underneath that turning chain. So you'll work your two back posts here and then work a turning chain right there. So I'll meet you back after eight rows. I just finished my eighth row there. And what I want you to do, because counting will be a little bit tricky, but there's an easy way. You just need to count these horizontal um, lines here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight, because we haven't worked in it. Then you'll know you've done your eight rows. So keep an eye on that. Then also I wanted to make sure, you know, you have these extra turning chains on this side and as well on this side. So anyway, that's what your little swatch should look like. We are chaining two and turning. And now we are going to switch directions. So here we go. Instead of continuing the direction, we're, you know, now we'll reach in and pop that one forward. Pop the next one forward. And now pop these backwards. So come from behind your work, poke it back, pull through work that double crochet. A little bit tricky. So you're entering from the back, popping that post to the back, yarning over, pulling through, pulling through two loops, pulling through two loops. Now let's push this one forward. Finish the double crochet. There we go. All right, continue this for another eight rows and you will have the pattern down. And then the next thing I'm going to show you is how we worked the border. So this is my last stitch after the eight rows. I'll work my regular double crochet right here into the corner and we're done. And now um, Hannah has made it really easy to put this fl a flat border. She felt like after she had all this puff in the middle, she wanted really something flat to continue to get more width out of it. So right here, um, kind of around the post of the one you just made, just work a double crochet right there and then when we come back around we'll finish but that's our first corner right there now work one half double crochet around the post or the turning chains the end each row so split spread spread the rows apart if you need to see yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull up a loop yarn over and pull through all three loops. That's a half double crochet. So continue to find one stitch per the end of the row. When you get to your first, the end of the row, you'll want to work three of them into the same space, but kind of, you know, you're going around. One, two, three. We'll come back and weave that, that tail in later. There's my third. Now, 
here we are at the bottom starting chain. Just work one half double crochet in between each post. You don't need to worry about finding the top of any stitch. Just go in between those posts. Keep it really easy on yourself because velvet is tricky to find those stitches and you don't need to be struggling. So one stitch on either side of the stitch. And um, work across the bottom, put three half double crochets into the next corner, work across the top, same way in between each stitch, and then three half double crochets in the corner, and then I'll meet you back to show you how to start the second round. I'm back to that starting half double crochet that I worked around that stitch, so it kind of looks like a corner. So what I'll do is just finish finish here by working two and then we kind of have our three. Um, whoops, I mean one more. That's our third corner. There we go. Now we'll work in between and, and keep going. We're not going to join the round. That's what I'm um, trying to say. You just get to keep on going. But we will do something different when we get to this very first um, corner. So let me work down the side. So we have our three stitches that make up the corner. So on the second pass, how we're going to get it to continue fanning out and still working in between the posts is that I'll work two stitches to the side of the middle post and then two more to the other side. And so when we come back around again, the three stitches will be in between these, these two stitches and then we'll alternate that every row. That's how we'll get the corner to continue to fa fan out and still be able to work in between the posts. So one more time in case I wasn't clear enough. So here's my three half double crochets. I'm going to work two to one side of the middle post and then two to the other side. Okay, so continue on and when you do the next row, then you'll have the space in between the two sets to work your three half double crochets. So every other row is gonna be a little bit different, okay? But I think that's all you need to know. Just weave those ends in and make sure, and I would leave extra long ends and try to wind it in and out as best you can because velvet is very slippery. That is our best tip. We have played with velvet enough to know that this is one of our favorite stitches. These Both of these two stitches are our favorite to do with velvet. They seem to hold the yarn snug and not pull too many loops free because a lot of people have problems with that. So anyway, keep your tension tight and I hope you enjoy making this amazing, luxurious, it is so soft. We love this velvet so, so very much. So anyway, come and show us your finished blanket if you'd like to on um, use a hashtag Daisy Farm Crafts on Instagram or come find us in on Facebook, the page Daisy Farm Crafts. Join our group if you need even more help or you want to see what other colors people are making um, using the very same patterns that you might be if you're using Daisy Farm Crafts. So anyway, thank you everybody as always for your patience with us and for me, I'm doing the best I can teaching. I'm just so, so um, grateful for your kind comments and so happy to have you guys follow us along. All right, we'll see you next time.